in the coming day, Jesus Christ will return to the earth as the millennial Messiah or the second coming. Travis was one good song. So, I guess I do get to do another video at least. Yay. And since we've got uh, Yom Kippur today, and then we have the Feast of Tabernacles on Thursday, next week, might as well go over them for you so that we can complete the collection and uh, go over uh, Hanukkah, which also does play a part in it. And I've done these videos before, but we're living in it. We are the fulfillment. <coughs> and so, one thing that must be understood is that Mormons are supposed to be Jewish. Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon clearly state we're Jewish. And yet, Mormons say they're Christian. So that's a big problem. It's the same big problem that Christians have done to the Jews with Roman Emperor Constantine. And on uh, Bill Maher's episode last night, I was able to see the YouTube clips in which I, <clears throat> there were there was an argument about January sixth uh, as to whether or not it actually happened. <laughs> Or who was the? Uh, it was a stupid argument. <clears throat> it was like uh, the argument of of January six wasn't a coup because it didn't succeed and Biden became president. It's as stupid as saying that October seventh is done and over with. And so the Jews no longer have a claim to defend themselves. And his uh, uh, new rules talked about a, a very popular singer. Did I hear that correctly? Billions? Dear God. But he rightfully called it out. I mean, seriously, guys, you guys learning from Chinese TikTok about American and world history. I just want to bang my head. So those of you who are LGBTQ who don't watch my channel, And so you are not getting the warning voice yet again. In Nazi Germany, which Bill Maher brought up, but he didn't bring this part up, the Nazis justified locking up the Jews in the concentration camps and performing psychological manipulation, torture treatments. which is why psychology is evil, and thus has caused the it pronoun program problem. 
is that they got the Nazis to label the Jews as the alternative pronoun it. They were claiming that the Jews were rapists and terrorists and criminals, and thus to turn them into the other, to justify the rounding them up. And does that sound anything familiar with our southern border and MAGA? No. No, because Trump's not Nazi. No, not at all. That, how dare you, Travis? You dumbass. That's exactly what's going on. Trump is purposely using the Nazi rhetoric of hate to cause America's fall and collapse. Immigration is Congress's job, unless there's a national security crisis. So MAGA, by calling them who want asylum or immigration into America as the alternative pronoun, it, calling them rapists and terrorists and drug pushers and all sorts of other criminal <sighs> name calling. Not just to make it the president's responsibility to bypass Congress's responsibility, but also to do the same thing that was done to the Jews, to round them up in concentration camps, to perform human experimentation and testing with psychologists we are doomed as we are repeating history. And so likewise with LGBTQIAPO+, psychologists have convinced you that you are LGBTQIAPO+, when back in the homophobic, homophobic 80s, I'm not saying that fast three times, it was just gays and lesbians. It was the 90s that created, through psychology, Watching Star Trek New Generations. Oh dear God, I just... Oh, I saw that episode. Remember, you guys were following me? <laughs> <clears throat> and so after convincing a certain number of people to believe that they're these new created pronouns, you are now accepting that you are its. And you were able to destroy the Constitution by getting exclusive laws just for you and not the whole American citizenry equally. You know, as the 14th Amendment, Section 1 says, we are all equal and to be treated equal under the law to all receive rights of life, liberty, and property, but you wanted more And that's set up for MAGA and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to push for their exclusive rights to destroy the Constitution. The Church is doing a religious freedom movement. The Constitution is destroyed. Good job, guys. The greatest nation in the world about to be destroyed. All because of the it factor. <clears throat> and so this singer, being taught by China TikTok, believes that the Jews are occupiers. Yeah, that's what Palestine says, all of Islam says, but it's Islam who are the occupiers. Everybody has purposely, neglectfully, maliciously forgotten this to turn the Jews into the enemy. It's abominable. And the enemy is claiming to be the victim. Victimizing the victim, the Israeli Jews. <coughs> and so the scriptures originated with the Jews. Before the creation of Christianity, before the creation of Islam. 
And so all of the so-called prophecies of Christianity and Islam are replacements of the Jewish prophecies and revelations. And because they are replacements, they are not true automatically. And so Mormons don't get this about the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith. They're Jewish, not Christian. And yet, the leaders of this corporation, because it's not a church, remember 1923 Articles of Incorporation? You don't know anything about that, huh? You've not been following me, you have no clue. So that you can pretend to be dumb and then attack me with hate to prove the church is true. Again, you're pulling the same stunt, Mormons. Patterns. You are not the good guys doing the acts of the bad guys. And thus, what Christianity and Islam have to do in order for their replacement of revisionist history to be true, they themselves have to be the ones to cause it. And so, just like Nazis, just like MAGA with Trump, so too with Christians and Islam. They are purposely causing the fulfillment of their revisionist interpretation of the Jewish prophecies and revelation. And they're having a difficult time, they're not doing a very good job. Nelson, for example, failed to have the temple completed on both conferences this final year of the latter days. <laughs> so Jesus was a no-show yet again. But he, he threatened, Jesus is coming today. It's Nelson who said it. And I covered the church news article earlier, uh, a couple of months ago, wasn't it? Which was a, a just a, a plagiarism of uh, an earlier conference talk that he gives where he botched the definition of atonement. That's today, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. And Nelson knows this, but he's purposely botching it because of Mormon Christian interpretation of revisionist Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith. And so when he talks about atonement, you're not supposed to think of Yom Kippur. You're supposed to think of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and Claire Crosby's cute little song that they replaced her for conference. Did you? Oh my God. You <laughs> can't replace Claire. <sighs> she does those cute little look when she's. Oh my God. Just melts your heart. And so because of this revision of the Jewish religion, Christians and Islam both get atonement wrong. They call it their judgment day, when Jesus is going to come from outer space on the back of a flying horse. Mormons say he doesn't need the horse. Uh, Islam, I, I, I'm not quite sure he, he comes but it's unclear how. <laughs> Maybe just appears. And then goes on a murdering spree. And coos the governments. Murders people, takes over the government. That's Christianity, Islam, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And Christians include that Jesus is also going to be a kidnapper with the rapture. First comes the rapture, the kidnapping and holding people hostage, and then those who are left behind are murdered. 
Isn't Jesus great? Great baby Jesus. <sighs> raped by a dove in Christianity, raped by Father <laughs> in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <sighs> Just abominable, guys. I mean, seriously, what is so wrong in your brain that you can't figure this out? I mean, do you really like getting raped and raping others? Is this why you cheer for it? And demand that the Jews get exterminated so that the real meaning of the scriptures are gone? I just, that's the one thing, is that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, for their millennial kingdom, must get rid of Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. Because there's no way that they can keep it and expect to have all Mormons of the millennium fully indoctrinated into the lie. See how well it worked for me? <laughs> You're always going to get those people who are going to figure it out. Who will actually read the Book of Mormon and go, wait a minute, Jews are not Christians, Christians are not Jews. Wait a minute, the laws of physics are being violated? Wait a minute, the laws of English grammar are being violated? translation is being violated <clears throat> and yet the church thinks that this is how they do things to bully and threaten and destroy anybody who dares use truth I'm a victim of this born and raised Mormon in the covenant path told about Joseph Smith being our founder and then I found out about a document from my parents' Mormon library that Joseph Smith said that the Biblical Hebrew text was incorrectly translated and only came out with a half a sentence revisionist translation. And so, what about the rest of the Bible? We believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it is translated correctly, and it's obviously not translated correctly, and so I want to know Biblical Hebrew so that I can figure out how to correctly translate the Bible as Joseph Smith says it's supposed to be translated and everybody's saying no Joseph is wrong <laughs> but the church is true isn't it Joseph Smith is our founding prophet isn't he what do you mean he's wrong that was unacceptable to me and so I myself had to do the whole research and things were set up for me to accomplish what I wanted to learn and I did it and I found out that I had to decipher Paleo Hebrew to do it and sure enough Joseph was right and because I found this out I notified the church and said hey Joseph Smith is correct Paleo Hebrew I deciphered it and I was arrested as a terrorist and locked away in their secret concentration camp for six years of my life. It was supposed to be for the rest of my life, but there were some boo-boos on the enemy's part, and I got freed in 2014. I told you all about this. This is where the Hinkley dream comes in. And so... Avraham Gileadi, likewise, was threatened. He was excommunicated and fired. How dare you bring up the Jewish Christ, even though you're mingling it with Christian Jesus. <clears throat> and the September 6th, the others who were finding out about the rock and a hat. How dare you find out about the rock and a hat? And so they fire and excommunicate people. And now the church is saying, okay, yeah, sure, rock. Uh-huh. Gift and power of God. We told you that the whole time. <laughs> the problem is, is that Joseph Smith had nothing to do with the composition of the Book of Mormon. This 
is the diversionary trap that the church is setting for you so that you accept the lie that Joseph Smith alone was responsible so that you don't get it and so likewise with talk of Christianity as I'm aware that Bill Maher himself acknowledges that Jesus could have been a man teaching moral philosophy but refuses to go so far as to claim that he's God <laughs> but once you start accepting Jesus as a real historical figure you've now given credence to the first creed of Christianity the Nicene Creed made up 325 CE never existed before all of a sudden is made at that council this is where Christianity was created you can't create something that previously existed and this is the conundrum that Catholics especially with the Pope have for next year what do they do do they acknowledge Constantine creating Christianity 1700 years to the day next August or do they ignore it and hope it goes away and everybody forgets about it and still continues to believe the creeds doctrines that were created that the Jewish prophecies and revelations are now literal histories for people to acknowledge that Jesus was in existence even though they diminish his divinity still gives credence to the first creed just like Brigham Young saying Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon are Christian and Exfo Nevermose complained that Joseph Smith is a polygamist, that Joseph Smith used a rock and a hat, that Joseph Smith can't translate, that Joseph Smith was a criminal and the leader of the Danites and was murdering Mormons who didn't follow his new world order in 1838. You're giving credibility to Brigham Young, who was not authorized to succeed Joseph Smith. That was Brigham's change. As the president of the Twelve, he now created his new Christian church, stealing Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, turning them Christian, and now all successive presidents are from the president of the Twelve. To ignore this factual data turns into chaos and for a person who's got three billion plus people viewing and following and loving it <sighs> needs to be called out and I've gone over with you especially this year multiple times telling you about the origins of the Jews on the mountaintop of Salem long before the Palestinians or the Philistines from which the Islam stole the name for their land <laughs> that's not the land that Babylon designated it as it was the sea people who designated as Philistia and thus became Palestine and Arabic dear God so frustrating but I do notice the end at the end and so there is an element of paleo Hebrew translation that still remains even though all Islam have no clue what it means <sighs> academia.edu guys I've got it all on but, oh my god and is used as a suffix determinative for king or kingdom for land king for the person king uh, land for the kingdom for land 
pencil Samsung Sun Shemesh King. Sun King. And so when you Google search it, obviously they get it wrong. They put Sun Child. They're guessing. It's tradition. It's wrong. <laughs> they didn't decipher Paleo Hebrew. I did. So. Babylon, yeah, it also utilizes that Paleo-Hebrew uh, suffix determinant of the kingdom of Bel. Babel. <coughs> and so it's actually King Bel, because the extra B at the beginning is a suffix determinant of, but that would be Paleo-Hebrew. Aramaic for Kippur, Yom Kippur from the Biblical Hebrew text is a completely different translation, different hieroglyphs from Egypt. And so that's why you need to restore it back to its Paleo-Hebrew form to see, uh, because uh, it's in Aramaic you've uh, the per part is the house symbol with uh, the uh, holy stand used to carry sacred objects on top of it that's used in parades. And so the holy house, referring to the temple. And yeah, that likewise applies for Yom Kippur as well. Uh, but is Yom Kippur is preparatory to the temple which is requiring the exodus of the Feast of Tabernacles. And then uh, Hanukkah, when the Jews, uh, during the Maccabean Revolt, during the Greek period, uh, retook their temple and then had the menorah lit for the eight days, magically lasting, the oil magically lasting for the whole time period. And whether that was actually true or they're saying that to be symbolic of the future, which, yes, <laughs> it, the Jews have lost so much knowledge because of Constantine's creation of Christianity and then the abuse and the violence towards the Jews chasing them around Europe and then Muhammad got started and likewise added to the Jews problems and so yeah lots of knowledge got lost during the dark ages but during the middle ages there began a resurgence uh, even uh, in 600 with Jewish Kabbalism which was an attempt to uh, restore much of the knowledge that was lost. But they too still are not fully understanding it, but they're getting better. And so there's a lot of good stuff in Jewish Kabbalism, which, like I said, is right there in the Book of Mormon. I'm the one who contributed Expo Nevermose to additional plagiarisms in the Book of Mormon, and nobody wants to acknowledge my credentials. Mine, I figured it out. Though Joe Samson actually figured it out, but he's faithful and true to the church, believes that it's all part of God's written finger. <laughs> and then his son gets busted by the law. <laughs> Going to prison. And so, in Paleo-Hebrew, it's different. The C, or the K, because you understand phonetically, it's, oh my God. And it's, it's too much information needed to explain this for you. Get rid of the phonetics. Quit being hooked on phonemes, or phonetics, or whatever, phonics. The K 
is the scroll symbol from Egypt, the papyrus scroll. And, and so it's talking about scriptures, writings, records, documents. And so in religious terminology, we're talking scriptures. That's the prefix determinative for the root word per, which is fruit. So scriptures about fruit? Not quite. <laughs> we have some nice pomegranates. We have some nice apples and oranges and citrus. Uh, are olives a fruit, or are they considered a vegetable? Should we check? Should we waste time? I'm telling you, when the computers first came out, it was awesome. They were so fast, they were able to file things orderly without me having to manually do it. It was just automatic. And now with algorithms running the internet and running my computer system with every new micro or, uh, Windows update, it's just trashing my system. I'm very frustrated trying to get things to do what I want it to do, what I knew it used to be able to do, and it's no longer able to do because it's an algorithm. It's telling me what I should be doing. And it's not what I want it to do. <sighs> yes, they're fruits. So olives also are a part of this. Gethsemane for wine press of grapes of wrath. <clears throat> and so it's the fulfillment. Scriptures are prophecy and revelation. They haven't happened yet. That's why the prophets and revelators are writing these things down of the future day when they will happen. Guess what? Today's Yom Kippur, the Jewish Judgment Day. The day when Mormons are supposed to be of pure of heart. And how many thumbs down am I going to get for this video, Mormons? If anybody's even still around to watch. <clears throat> it's just, I have never seen such extremist hatred than with Mormons. Because it's far worse. I mean... Mary getting raped by a dove? Yeah, that's just bestiality. <laughs> but the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints turning the Book of Mormon Christian makes incest acceptable. <laughs> that's just so sad because I'm watching Caprica and uh, Adama's father's daughter so his sister what did, oh my god Adama's sister commander of uh, Battlestar oh my god <laughs> an innocent girl unaware of the dark side of of uh, meta Facebook of Greystone <laughs> the secret AI program within uh, his meta program and then Zoe Greystone's daughter is the one who is creating the one true god of meta <laughs> to destroy the culture of wickedness and abomination and so the Adama's sister is completely innocent and pure just a good girl going to school Playing with kids was out on a, with her mom on the train when it blew up, and now she's been created as an AI program, and she's now stuck in the metaverse. And in the metaverse, it's just full-on criminal corruption. You have to murder. You have to rape. You have to 
all kinds of crime, and nobody knows how to win the game, but they all have their own versions of how to win the game, and you can't die, because if you die in the game, you can never be allowed back in. But she, having died and been created as this Zoe program, cannot die in the game. She's immortal in the game. And so in order for her to get out, she is manipulated to do bad things, and she got played. And now she's stuck there in the game, and she's now come to accept she's never going to get out, and they transformed her into an evil person. Where when her dad finally gets to her to try to save her, she murders him so that he won't continue to look for her. He is now banned from the game. He can no longer try to save his daughter. That's what the whole society did to her. That she became a murderer and a, just an evil person committing thefts and all sorts of stuff. And that's the sad reality of Mormon girls. I just, I cry, I just utterly cry that Mormon girls are not born evil even though they've got DNA of the Danites in them. They have to be taught and raised into the corruption with their parents who are the traditions of the Danites who murdered Joseph and Hiram. And then they go to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to be indoctrinated as evil, having turned Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon Christian. It just makes me cry. And that's where Joseph Fielding Smith Sr. becomes president and leaks the Danite plot to overthrow the government of the Danites as Oaks got leaked by a sister missionary, innocent and pure as she thinks. And so she doesn't understand what she leaked. Oaks confessed that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was only going to have the election in 2020 be a test run. So the Bill Maher argument over January 6th, but Biden became president. So it doesn't matter anymore. Let it go. Get over it. It's just... And so, yes, Oaks was flowing through my head when I heard them talk about this. Guys, Oaks is in charge of that. He caused Trump to lose so that Trump could cause January 6th. This is what it all means. And that little sister missionary had no clue, still had no clue when the guy who is hot for her took that quote from her and used it for his video, which YouTube mocking me recommended. <laughs> Although James, uh, yesterday was it James? Uh, or was it two days ago, had uh, seen that video about uh, the girl and uh, uh, about another girl and uh, uh, he, he uh, laughed and thought it was funny that uh, he had watched that same video uh, before I did my, or before he watched my video. And, uh, and so I responded with, are you saying that that was recommended to me because you watched it? <laughs> and, and it could be with the algorithms. That could be why my views are so low because I keep saying I never want to see this content again. <laughs> and thus preventing those who watch that content from watching my content. It could be that kind of a trap that YouTube is setting to purposely 
try to manipulate my channel to not cater to my desires, but to cater to those who watch my channel's desires. Which is all crap, guys. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell are you watching? <sighs> Dear God. But regardless, I then added... Does this mean that your feed is having all of the YouTube porn recommendations? <laughs> I have not heard back from him on that. <laughs> and if you don't know, YouTube purges its site of women. They are anti-women on YouTube with the new CEO from And so, yes, this algorithm is just completely destroying YouTube, and it will fall in the near future here, but nonetheless, it could even be Trump that destroys it. Oh, no, Trump won't do anything. We just need to let him in. It's not going to be as bad. Oh, my God, seriously? I just, just want to bang my head of people who who bully this nonsense as if we'd forgotten Trump as president who literally are falling for the lies to spread the lies of anarchy that guy is just a pure evil man Because that's what the arguments were. That's why Hillary Clinton conceded. Because of the belief by the deep state Dems. Well, I, you know, this is just political rhetoric. Everybody lies about what they're going to... And then the presidency will change him and he'll behave and he won't be so bad. We find out at least a couple years later that day one... He started his Nazi immigration policy at the border, rounding them all up in concentration camps, separating the babies from their nursing mothers. And I, I just, and everybody else is not understanding the threat we are under. We are not supposed to be voting between communism or Nazism. We're supposed to vote for a representative who will obey his oath to the United States Constitution. America has fallen. And they're just torturing us until the day that it becomes official and that we don't even realize it. That is the psychological manipulation. And so, Yom Kippur is the test run in the Christian interpretation of Oaks. This was supposed to be the day, but Netanyahu has brilliantly, during this month, been attacking right before the Jewish Holy Day and immediately after the Jewish Holy Day. And so sure enough, I checked this morning's news, and sure enough, Netanyahu again did an attack at the end of the holiday. You know, their Yom Kippur, it's over. They're nine hours ahead of us. <laughs> and so... is a brilliant war strategy to prevent a big attack. And so, if nothing happens to the church leaders to fall, I, I'm just going to just curl up and
won't be saying, the church is true, the church is true, the church is true, my faith crisis is... No, no guys, I mean, seriously, I have a knowledge of things. Like I said, everything has already been happening. The fruit of the prophecies of the scripture has all happened. Here's Yom Kippur. Mormons are being tested. You've failed your judgment. I've seen the document or the comments. You failed. You cut yourselves off. You don't want Zion. Even though Nelson said that Zion is Utah. So there will be no exodus, as he had to then alter what the gathering means. Even the gathering for agronomy, for fruit, does not mean, oh, we just, we just plant more seeds in the vineyard and we're just leaving them there. What? <laughs> the whole purpose of planting seeds in a vineyard is so that when harvest time comes, you gather them all to the storehouse. <laughs> the one storehouse. Zion. And Nelson is trying to pull the con on you that nope, let everybody stay out in the world. Keep gathering more people out in the world. When he knows damn well that the money is what's being gathered to the storehouse of the church. Well, that's what it says in Malachi. No. <laughs> he completely botched it. And you are falling for it. And you are believing this dumbass of hate. Your baby's name is Lucifer for a reason. And so, no, the keys of Moses is not the keys of Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John are the ones who go out and talk about the scriptures. They're the planters of the seeds. And now it is harvest time for the keys of Moses to gather the Mormons to Zion. And we're still waiting for the church to fall. And there's some problems with this because of scripture. <laughs> Obviously, I'm deeply concerned. Because while I was locked up in the concentration camp of the church, I was getting revelation after the Hinckley dream, in which all things design building the Zion, running it. And after writing out the inspiration, I would eventually go through the scriptures and find that I was correct. This is because of my associative memory. My having gone through all of scripture brings to mind the certain scripture passages. So that when I'm getting inspiration for the building of Zion, it comes from the scripture. And all I need to do is find the scripture because of my associative memory. I'm able to recall it. All thanks to Sesame Street. They taught me how to use associative memory. So when school got monotonous with all the bleeping memorization, I said, enough is enough. And so, yeah, it would have been after fifth grade when the teacher gave me an F on my Idaho report. Bleep you, teacher. This is what I get for actually doing intensive research and study and, and doing this whole report rather than just doing a quick surface job. So bleep you, teacher. <laughs> and began using associative memory ever since. 
which I wish I would have done for fourth grade <laughs> with all the memorization we had to do. I still mess up the preamble and I still mess up every state and capital of the United States. Oh my god, so much memorization. And then Canada mocks us. We know all of our provinces and capitals. <laughs> There's like only three up in Canada. <sighs> God. And they never say sorry <laughs> for mocking us. The Canadian jokes. Don't know, you don't understand, don't worry about it. <laughs> In section 63, verse 24. Now behold, this is the will of the Lord your God concerning his saints. Any confusion about what that might mean? Do we have to discuss this for an hour before I can go on? that they should assemble themselves together upon the land of Zion. Now remember, Joseph Smith is living in real time, but he's also prophesying. This is the pattern for latter-day millennial Zion. Gather, keys of Moses, the president of the church, at least under Joseph. Remember Brigham Young changed it to be the president of the Quorum of the Twelve, of Peter, James, and John? <sighs> Not in haste. This is why I want this to happen sooner then later. Next Thursday is the gathering to Zion. There are things that need to be done so that it is done in order, lest there be confusion which bringeth bugs. <laughs> That's the ones. This is why I'm so frustrated. Because today would have been fine. Since you didn't do it for the fast of Gedalia. Since you didn't do it previously. This would be fine today. That the transfer is made. Even though Nelson says it's for Jesus. so that the announcement can go out tomorrow when Mormons go to church. So they go to sacrament meeting and they are told immediately we have received word that the church has fallen. We now are going to prepare for the exodus to Zion. And so please meet with your bishop if you willingly choose to go. There will be no monetary system of economy. You are going to have to give up your possessions rather than trying to sell them to make a profit because there's no system of economy in Zion. So if you choose to go, please see your bishop and he will make arrangements. And then the date for Thursday to begin the big historic trek to Zion, which the whole world press will be covering. And so if nothing happens today, If it happens on, in 
the Feast of Tabernacles, it will be in haste, there will be confusion, there will be bugs. <laughs> and I have a standing agreement with bugs that if they stay outside, I won't hunt them down and kill them. But if they dare enter and try to occupy my land, see also talking about the purchasing of the lands part where Nelson is purposely twisting this around because Nelson is cooing the government that's why 17 temples they bought the land they own the land Joseph Smith says yes we need to obtain Zion but he's now Back to talking about their day, Zion has already been purchased. We just have to go in and claim it. There are people that are going to be confused, they're not going to believe. But, again, this is why there are certain things that need to happen so that it's not in haste, that there's no confusion and no bugs. But Nelson is purposely using the scriptures as Christian interpretation. Because Jesus isn't going to come. Jesus was a creation of Constantine. You can't just change the nature and character of Constantine's creation of Jesus and therefore he's now true. It's like saying you made Pinocchio and all of a sudden a little fairy princess comes along and zaps him and now he's real boy. Mm -mm. Doesn't work that way. Christian Jesus now all of a sudden isn't true just because you changed his nature and character. You still believe the Jews are wrong. That the prophecy and revelations are incorrect. And that you need to replace them with your new created nature and character Jesus. And so Nelson is purposely using that against you. To buy up the land when he coos the government. In the coming day. You're supposed to be today, Nelson. What's up? Did you fail again? <laughs> Should that be my title? And then Nelson will go, Oh, crap. Travis caught us. Let's quickly do it. that I don't know if I did at the beginning I probably should do a separate video clip because Joseph Smith's second vision where he adds they that come shall burn them let's burn you this is the day and so far they have failed they didn't come as a thief in the night Jesus the thief in the night <clears throat> you know and so in a sense you can see that they're probably blaming the Jews because Netanyahu did it as a thief in the night <laughs> he's not the enemy but I was appalled when Nelson said that Jesus was going to rule from 
Jerusalem talking about atonement with his altered definition. Uh, there's more involved with what Joseph Smith says there. One, it's not Jesus' coming that causes it. Two, it's Christians who are the enemy who will cause it and claim Jesus. This is what Mormons are not getting. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is that enemy. And Joseph Smith exposes this in verse 1. Evil, disposed, and designing, militant persons are attacking his church and, and spreading lies about it. And so Joseph Smith had the name of his church. What's the name, Mormons? Gotcha. Joseph Smith Papers reveals Joseph Smith's original document, published in 1842. Because what happened in 1838 to prevent it from getting published that year? The coup of Joseph Smith. Brigham Young locks up Joseph Smith in Liberty Jail. Brigham Young had his Danites go around saying that Joseph Smith is the leader of the Danites. You have to follow our new world order or you are dead, dissenting Mormons. We are the true Mormons. We are the Danites. Give us your wives. And then say that it's Joseph who got them. I just want to cry. You know, there were women who were honorable enough to say, no, I want no part of this. There were women who were less honorable, but still a level of honorable, divorcing Brigham Young, divorcing their other Danite harem leaders. But too many Mormon women turned out like Adama's sister and became evil with the Danites and blamed Joseph for it rather than the Danites who made them. And I don't know how willing they were. Obviously, this goes all the way back to when the Danites were doing it when they first were going around converting people to the wrong name of the church. And having it all a secret. Joseph Smith is in charge of this, but shh. Don't go around talking about it. Not even to Joseph. from the Nicolaitan band. I had two failed marriages, so this betrayal of a spouse hurts, even though it's not my wife, obviously. For Mormons to just be that evil I, I, I still, I can't grasp, I 
don't understand how you can believe that you are in the right, that it's okay to do. That you can be married and not even love your spouse. You know, if you don't love your spouse, get a divorce. Then you can go whoring off. But to do it behind your spouse's back, to do it with your spouse, I, I, I can't grasp that. It, it does not compute. And maybe that's why I could never be turned. It's because my associative memory of the correct doctrines makes it very obvious that such things are wrong and lead to corruption and destruction. I don't know. But it's just sad. And it's even sadder to wonder if I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. Because I've removed the human factor from the creation of Zion. So that only those who are watching right now will even know that it was my design and plan. It is set up that nobody would even know who's in charge. Nobody would even know that there is a Christ in the learning of the Jews. People will just have the whole bishops and all of that is taken care of through them. And they just, who's in charge? Who's our leader? We don't know. We just got notifications to set this all up. And so, yes, I would appear to the rest of you as just one of you going to Zion and then eventually getting my place to live. Nobody knowing all of you equal with me. hopefully that it gets established and set up so that it is self-sustaining and self-sufficient to continue to run for an indefinite period of time until corruption creeps in and destroys it and thus eliminate the, the uh, Steve Young syndrome of not choosing a woman when all he had to do was just say, you. And she would have said, yes. <laughs> but then gets into the marriage and then she becomes a beast, wants to control his agency, denies him sex, <laughs> and the marriage is over. What a guy fears women. We have seen it way too many times, especially from our own parents. And so, yeah, we, we're sensitive people. <laughs> we don't want to be bullied and abused in the relationship by matriarchal abusers who think that they need to be matriarchal abusers to counteract the patriarchal abuse. Can't you just love? So yeah, I'm hoping that that will be solved to eliminate the human factor because no monetary system of economy. And then over time, all of their discussions and arguments back and forth were all about the economy not getting regulated. And I'm thinking, yeah, the government's supposed to regulate the economy. The government is required to go after businesses for their corruption. The Google antitrust thing? Yeah, Google should have been broken up immediately. And yet they're purposely delaying it because Google is a mega billion dollar company. 
with many employees. And so Google is holding America hostage, even though they've lost their antitrust lawsuit. And so thus hesitation and delays to actually do what needs to be done to prevent the chaos that's going on in America because of Google, because of other companies, because of the church corporation of Jesus Christ. Our government let them reign without impunity. The original constitution was only businesses pay taxes. We the people were not allowed to pay taxes. But then a constitutional amendment kicked in, and now we, the people, pay taxes. And they lock up Wesley Snipes, rather than going after Amazon and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for not paying taxes. We've got multi-billion dollar companies that are not paying taxes. When we, the people, who maybe get you know, 50,000 a year? The IRS comes after us to lock us up because we didn't pay a couple hundred dollars? There's something seriously wrong with this. And it is our government that has failed America, purposely causing the problems and then blaming us for when all things break out in chaos and confusion. And then they come along and then enforce Lucifer's plan of happiness on us because we can't be trusted with our agency that they themselves set us up for. It is all a trap. My mission is over, guys. That's what the dream on 9-11 was all about. The 215, repeated 15 number. Uh, that's the start of both Passover and Tabernacles. And so, yes, I'm still curious about why it was Irene, because that indicates the death of, of uh, Nelson, Oaks, and Holland. And yet, here we are, closing in on tabernacles now, as today is Yom Kippur. And so... Yeah. I saw the church news. They've now buried conference. They still have the notification at the top, but only for the text not to watch the videos, which is hilarious. So, conference is gone, done away with, not talking about it anymore. All right, so we'll go over again, because I already did this video, in case you're wondering, when are you going to get to the point about uh, Yom Kippur and then Tabernacles, Travis? I already did it. It was the, when I had the dream, I went over this with you. So, yeah. And so, yeah, I'm still waiting to see if I'm going to be doing the video on the curse of Joseph Smith. I don't know. All I know is I did my part. My mission is complete. The prophecies and revelations have all happened. I've done the work. That I was asked to do. My mission is over. I mean, I can go over that again with you. The first and, and last of my mission. February 2017. I'm in a basement room. And I'm packing three suitcases. And my dad comes down. And he's there at the doorway standing. And 
I say, I'm going on a mission and other conversations that I didn't remember when I woke up. I close the suitcases, I take them out. I'm at the top of a mountain and there's a paved driveway and a pickup truck blew out in the distance and I go walking towards it. To my left, I see a grove of trees, missionaries wearing white shirts, not their suits, are uh, there prancing through the, the grove. And I uh, wave to them, despite carrying the three suitcases. It's a dream. I can do whatever I want. I can fly in my dreams. I can slam a basketball repeatedly by floating in air. You thought only Michael Jordan can do it? I can do it in my dreams. <laughs> I've done it in my dreams. I've had some really wild dreams of flying, even time travel. I just got a flashback of that dream. That was weird. I was going back and forth in time, and I was flying and on the top of mountains, and yeah, it was really weird, but anyway. And I uh, said, so I'm going on a mission, just like them, but it was a different kind of mission, obviously. So I put the suitcases in the back of the pickup truck and get the passenger side of the vehicle. Three months later, I start collecting the history of the people. My mission has begun. And so my YouTube videos are based upon collecting the history of the people. And on the 23rd of September, 2017, yeah, my ministry began to save Mormons from the Great and Abominable Church. And we are looking at a complete and utter failure and disaster. <coughs> uh, Idaho Chick commented yesterday saying that she was in uh, Utah and still not coming to see me. <laughs> Gonna talk to her family, trying to get them out of out of uh, Utah before a day of burning and uh, and so I responded with uh, a notice that the stock market broke records on Friday there is no intention of bombing America this weekend today and so they either canceled it again you're welcome <laughs> or <clears throat> they failed and so they have to go to the next plan plan C D E F G which yes they still have the election and they still you know with Musk saying uh, nobody's trying to assassinate Biden or Harris yeah it's coming that's a backup plan And so, I, I have, God. anyway, moving on. And so, I uh, also informed her of uh, Netanyahu's brilliance, making sure that Israel is safe by attacking first, because even though he's attacking first, it doesn't make him the bad guy. It's still a defensive attack. It is not in a, a first responding attack. That was Hamas, October 7th. And so I noticed that pattern of Netanyahu's. <sighs> and, uh, and so, I guess I probably should go over, but uh, anyway, the 9-11 dream, yeah, it, it was clear that it's over, because uh, Irene, rather than Hinckley with the Hinckley dream, or Monson with the Monson dream, it 
is now hiring. He's not the president of the church. And yet. And yet. And so the new two number 15s made it very clear that it was the exodus. Thus the end of my mission. And so, yeah, I'm technically done. And thus this video is to finish it up. To talk about Yom Kippur. And Sakat. And then uh, Hanukkah. On this day, the Jews do traditional rituals, not understanding of the prophetic symbolism behind it. There's fasting, no eating and drinking. Well, atonement is the fulfillment of fruit. It's harvest time. And yet, you're supposed to fast, no eating nor drinking. Yeah, this is a prophecy of the day that shall burn as an oven. The wicked are destroyed. And so thus, this day of atonement is to purify yourself so that you are not left behind. That you get to go to Zion. And so thus you fast as a symbolism of the wicked who don't go to Zion, who do not fulfill the prophecies of fulfillment. Fruit. They do not get gathered to Zion. And so no wearing of leather shoes. Again, same concept. They don't go to Zion. They are barefoot. They aren't able to walk the journey. Which is how I lost the second axe. Knowing that we are in the latter days, she demanded that I tell her the date for the exodus. <laughs> we haven't even had the first eclipse yet. Or the 23rd of September 2017 yet, and so then July 2017 I make that video because of her. <laughs> and there was something that happened on that Sunday in the lesson, talking about the exodus of Brigham Young. And Nelson likewise in his talk likewise referred to that. I caught that. <sighs> but nonetheless, she mentally couldn't handle it because she was too consumed with having to walk back to Zion. She couldn't get over it. She couldn't get under the concept of driving to Zion. <laughs> Getting a ride with our neighbors if her family won't do it. And so, yeah, she... then vulnerable and then her sister and the bishop and all ganged up on her and they took her away and so it was annulled not a divorce so it never happened no sex ever occurred which is number five on this list and so yes the whole concept of sex fruit contains seed for more fruit, but you gotta plant it. Seed, egg, baby. Same concept. So thus no sex, because you are the wicked one. You don't go to Zion. Your branch and root are destroyed. Thus Malachi, talking about the coming of Elijah, the hearts of the fathers to the children, the sons and the sons to the fathers lest the whole earth be smitten with a curse. And Joseph Smith adds in the second vision, the whole earth is utterly wasted. This is what it means. There's an extermination event coming. They that come shall burn you to destroy mankind. The whole purpose of Zion is to perpetuate the human race, to keep it going, to rebuild it 
to replenish the earth after the destruction occurs. And so thus, no sex is for the wicked. They're dead. No more seed egg babies. And so yes, if you've not been paying attention to all of the attacks on mankind, it's to prevent mankind from seed egg babies. Even with birth control, it's to prevent seed egg babies. Even with animal rights activists and plant life activists, to prevent seed egg babies. It's not just the murders that are going on and the rapes that are going on to force the women to have the baby and then give the baby up for an adoption and, and human trafficking to good Christian or Mormon when the church had their adoption agency families who are rich and white. All of this is designed to prevent sex, to purposely vilify raped women to justify punishing women to force them into trad wife harems so that they can no longer be raped. It's now in a controlled agency environment. Lucifer. And so no bathing or washing. You're ash. You are not clean and pure for Zion. No anointing oneself. You do not get to be joint heirs with Christ, whom you will never know, because he's expecting to live just like one of you. He does not want to rule over you. But yeah, that's the whole anointing, king. So all of this has to do with failing your judgment. And the Jews have lost their understanding of this. They don't understand the prophetic symbolism of it. Okay, and so those who pass get to go on to Zion starting Thursday. Just, oh my God. The announcement tomorrow would be perfect. It's got to be done today so that the announcement can be given to them to give it for tomorrow. <sighs> yeah, suck it is a different spell, excuse me, spelling, in that uh, it's the Osiris symbol and then cut for completion I believe be therefore perfect let me check again I don't memorize but that's what the picture symbolism is indicating English to Hebrew. Complete. Perfect. Huh. Michelle. So it's not. have my ready reference and so we'll have to break it down for you the K again for the scroll and it's similar to per but uh, this time the T is the cross for 8 April 2024 solar eclipse that crossed over the two previous eclipses forming the first letter of the Paleo Hebrew script A <coughs> And so this is the last year of the latter days, thus the writing of the latter days. And so Osiris, as the prefix determinative, uh, is a heavenly father. 
in that sense. Father Amun. As the father or the son becomes the father, the father becomes the son. So when the Christ becomes crowned, which in Aramaic script that's what the T is here, is the throne symbol of Isis for the religion, Melchizedek, king and high priest. You, you can see where the meaning intended to be. He becomes king of Zion, tabernacles, his house, the temple. And so it, it's not about turning Zion into a, a ritual place of, of priests wearing robes and, and performing temple rituals and such. No, it's his house. Just like you have your house in Zion. The temple is your home too. You live normally. That's the only thing that nobody is getting. And so the, the Levite sacrifice, offering a sacrifice of righteousness, yeah, that's just barbecue. We gotta eat. <laughs> but again, it has to do with harvest. We have the animals. We are preparing our meal because we're omnivores as humans. We're not herbivores. Mankind needs meat. And you got these animal rights activists and plant life activists that are trying to tell humans to kill themselves and let plants prevail. animals they want them all to go wild so that it becomes a survival of the fittest which we've already demonstrated survival of the fittest because we have brains that are able to domesticate animals and thus it's just the, these people learn from China TikTok <laughs> and want to murder mankind and they think that they're okay I even saw Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, however it's pronounced. She's a pro-Palestinian terrorist now. She is stopping the the uh, her environmental protesting, which I had respect for. But now she's gone off the deep end, supporting terrorism against Israel. Little Greta has lost her way, and it's so sad. Anyway, and so that's what Tabernacles is all about. Tents. Moses with the tent. You know, even the, the Yom Kippur today, that's Moses uh, with the Mormons at Zion in their tents, and then they're committing orgy sex, worshiping a golden cow rather than the gold cow. Turning the Book of Mormon golden when it's supposed to be gold. And and so, yeah, he smashes the law and everybody is, makes assumptions as to what it means and you're all clueless. <laughs> Quit turning it into literal history. And so, yeah, Aaron is usurping the religion and thus destroying Zion. And so thus they're wicked. And thus wickedness destroys Zion and keeps people from going to Zion. And thus that story in the scripture applies. But it's a harvest, it's a gathering. And tents, that's how it would be at the beginning. I've got it all planned out. I did a whole thing on it yesterday. It's several pages of what needs to be done because I was told to do so so I did it and now I wait just like when I was locked up I'm going I'm here for life why are you giving me this inspiration it will never be used I get out in 2014 oh okay maybe it'll be used I have no idea when now and then Perry Packer Scott die 
Scott dies on Yom Kippur. So I'm very well aware of what's going on in the bigger context because of my associative memory. But uh, nonetheless, if nothing happens, there's nothing I can do about it. And so, yeah, I then learned about the total solar eclipse on the 21st of August, 2017, Fox 13 News, Utah, November 4th, 2016, and I dropped my jaw, oh, we're at the latter days, finally, I might be able to do something about this. And thus had the dream, and then started the collection of the history of the people, and blah, blah, blah. Fruit. There's also a scripture that I also found, I don't know if it was in that same thing, thy feet as a testimony against them in the day of judgment. Yom Kippur, section 60 of the Doctrine of Governance. And after thou hast come up unto the land of Zion, and hast proclaimed my word, thou shalt speedily return, proclaiming my word among the congregations of the wicked, not in haste, neither in wrath, nor with strife. Shake off the dust of thy feet against those who receive thee not. That's the Yom Kippur thing. Leather shoes, dust, no bathing, and yet Mormons have turned it into a cursing of people who slam the door in your face because you lied to them, claiming Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon are Christian. Not in their presence, lest thou provoke them. <laughs> Don't you dust your feet on me! <laughs> but in secret, and wash thy feet as a testimony against them in the Day of Judgment. Missionaries miss that part. Day of Judgment. Here it is. The feet have been dusted on Mormons. Ooh, there's the title. Judgment Day. Dusting of feet. Happy feet. Okay. Um, but I was looking for something else, wasn't I? It's sort of a 93. Uh, it, it has to do with translation. Translate my scriptures and obtain a knowledge of the history of countries and kingdoms and laws of God and man. All this for the salvation of Zion. History of the people for Zion. So that they can know the truth and remember it, not repeat it. And thus, the... Uh, first ever female Twelve Apostle who's in charge of education. And so, yeah, we're all equal in Zion, but everybody has their part to contribute to. And, and there will be people who will have knowledge of things, obviously, and will be doing that to help contribute to Zion. As I myself will have a whole bunch of things that I can finally do in Zion, and we can get rid of this algorithm crap computers so that I can get things done. Oh my hell. It's just... Ugh. So. so is there anything more on tabernacles that I need to go over? Uh, 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 prayers. Uh, somebody asked me about prayers again last week, or the, earlier this week, with conference. I can't remember when, but I remember the comment. Uh, 
prayers are not to be rote prayers. You're not supposed to have an outline for prayers. This is where Christianity screws prayers up for you. The Catholic Church turned the Lord's Prayer into a rote prayer. <laughs> it's no different than a seance. And this has always bugged me with Brigham Young's temple endowment is the prayer circle. You know, I eventually would figure out Paleo, mouth to God. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> it was John Taylor, not Joseph Smith. And uh, the whole concept of going into the temple and having the name box where you write down a person's name, stick it in the box, and then the temple workers before an endowment session would go around and gather them all up and put them in the pouch that gets set on the altar for the prayer circle. And that's witchcraft. <laughs> that's idol worship. And the temple workers are required to refer to the names on the altar in his prayer. And, and so there's a form of rote prayer being forced upon every temple worker that performs the prayer at the altar as the others are wearing their robes and, and doing Pele L's. I miss Pele L. I prefer that rather than, oh God, hear the words of my mouth. Repeat it three times. Repeat it three times? Because we're only repeating it twice. intended with Belmar, but maybe we can use Belmar with that instead of the one I was originally thinking. Have Mormons in the prayer circle in the little box with Belmar's new rules. They're my famous videos after Belmar's episode. And so the temple prayers, as the Book of Psalm indicates to us, isn't it, or is it Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastes, or is it a multitude of scriptures, that the incense burned in the temple is the prayers ascending up unto God. And people have assumed that we talk to God. Now, for guys who, like me, did not know how to communicate with women to start getting to know them and ask them out on dates. You don't talk to a woman. You talk with a woman. Hopefully she's not talking to you. If she's talking to you, no matter how cute she is, you want to run. It will end up in disaster in a marriage, but nonetheless. I mean, why would you want to take dating advice from a guy who's a failure in relationships? <laughs> what do I know? And <laughs> it's exactly like a seed egg baby seed, soil, fruit. You don't know at the beginning if it's going to be perfect. You have to try and experiment. And so, yes, the two of you have to get together, agree to it, and then make it work. 
And then over time, you then realize whether or not you've produced something good or whether you've wasted your life and you should have gone after that other guy. <laughs> but you've got to make it work, both of you. And so, yes, you can find out in the beginning that it's, it's good because it feels good and, and everything is working great. But because of the miscommunication and the miseducation that we get, it goes into the relationship to be thorny, stony, wayside soil to ruin your relationships. Unless the family proclamation ruins Mormon's marriages and more ruins Mormon relationships, etc., etc. But that's a whole different other topic of discussion. And if we get to Zion, I'll have that all out for you. But Nonetheless, nobody will even know who I am. Travis, who are you? <laughs> and so, the concept of prayers always confused me as a kid because Mormon teaching, even from my parents, even from the mission, is that Heavenly Father, we thank Thee, we ask Thee, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's a rote prayer. That's idol worship. That's witchcraft. It's no different than a spell. We are not talking to God. We're not supposed to talk to God. But the scriptures tell us that we are supposed to pray always. And, and so that's how... As a kid, I was able to figure it out that it's listening to inspiration. And that's how I realized that I can be in any situation, a crowded room, noisy, music blaring, going to bed to Metallica. I can still have that connection to inspiration. This is what the church refuses to let you know and understand. They tell you to be in a quiet place so that you can listen to the still small feeling now. It used to be the still small voice. <clears throat> and of course, Mormons never hear it. Because they're not understanding what inspiration is. They're not purposely being led away from prayer. And that's Lucifer's thing in the Book of Mormon. Lucifer teaches a man not to pray. That's what the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is doing, teaching you not to pray by incorrectly teaching you about prayer, having you give the wrong kinds of prayers, and thus not teaching you how to pray. <coughs> and so I can do anything throughout my day and as you well know I get inspiration during the night time as well that is prayer you get inspiration and then you take that word and you implement it you make it so you know I my mission the records of the history of the people there it is I did it That's what we need to do with our inspiration. That's what you need to do with a relationship. You don't just say, oh, they're the one. I just have to now wait for them to come to me. <laughs> Everything has to be perfect. And, and you ruin the relationship. You're ruining prayers with what the church has taught you. And so you have no idea of how things are supposed to be. And so, yes, you are complete in Zion. You have done it. You are now perfect. You are now Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. All being able to live your lives the way you want. And hopefully, purge yourself of the incorrect situation so that you can just be with somebody you love and make it work. 
not have to worry about money and, and pressures of a religion lying to you, threatening you. You are able to be squished into wine. <laughs> no alcohol allowed. You get caught making alcohol, you're out. No drugs. No tobacco. I understand there's now a, uh, a, an electronic device to use on those who get seizures to help prevent seizures. So that's an interesting thing because I'm well aware of marijuana slowing down the brain when a seizure occurs because a seizure is when your brain is hyperactive with the electrical impulses and thus causes the seizure. And so marijuana slows your brain down. So people who don't have seizures who use marijuana, yeah, they talk very slow. Uh, yeah, because their brain's been slowed from the marijuana. And it's not harmful, as our government is labeled as a whatever category narcotic equal with actual narcotics. So I can understand that concern of wanting to legalize marijuana, but nonetheless, it does do harm. I mean, marijuana on me? Oh dear God, I would, I would go insane. My whole life, my, it's just been full-on active inspiration of stuff. And to be drugged and cut off that inspiration would ruin me. And so, yes, it's frustrating not to have a, the original computers with now with algorithms that are causing problems and delays on getting my inspiration out. So Zion will take care of that. No algorithm is allowed in Zion. So, no AI Zoe's. And Hanukkah. I almost forgot Hanukkah. And so, being found worthy to go to Zion after the gathering to Zion, then you have uh, Hanukkah, and I've already briefly told about it, but it's uh, the restoration of the temple set in, in order the house of God, the one mighty and strong, remember? That's me, in case you've forgotten. But you'll never know, because you'll think it's just everybody together doing it. That's the intention. You are Zion. And, I, and so this is where Nelson botched the cornerstone and capstone scriptures. It's cornerstone and capstone. It is not the chief cornerstone of the cornerstone. It is not the head of the corner becomes the head of the corner. <laughs> That's the Christian botching of it, is that the cornerstone is rejected, but then another cornerstone comes in to become the cornerstone, even though it's the same cornerstone that was rejected. And it makes no sense. It's stupid. It's Christian what they did to the Jews. The Jews are talking about a pyramid being built. You start with a cornerstone. The cornerstone was rejected. Nonetheless, at the end of the building of the pyramid, the day of fulfillment today, the capstone, the Christ. That's the whole purpose for the triangles. The two capstones of the mountain cities of Zion and New Jerusalem. Joseph Smith makes this very clear, sort of, in 19 July 1840. Brigham Young purposely did not want this published, not just because it was a female who was the clerk. <laughs> but Joseph Smith calls 
out Brigham Young and his twelve, with a reference to the Last Supper, <laughs> and calls them the enemy who's not only going to murder Joseph in the coming days, but is also going to be the enemy in the latter days. So yeah, it never got published it's in Joseph Smith papers. Just the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will never talk about it or acknowledge it. They'll let you continue to be happy, lady, and talk about hanging by a thread rather than brink of ruin from that document. And so that's the whole point of the Jewish star, is the two capstones, or the two mountain cities of Zion and Jerusalem in the latter days. And as it is in the center of the sun, it is the moon that eclipses on 8 April 2024. Crossroads and marks the spot for the location of Zion and New Jerusalem, the mountain cities of the Lord, with the capstones, thus the prophecy of the capstone with the cornerstone that was rejected. So Joseph Smith was rejected by Mormons. They call him Christian. They reject the keystone of the church, the Book of Mormon, call it Christian. This is very plain and precious. Mormons have rejected Joseph Smith, the cornerstone, turning him Christian. He's Jewish, Mormons. You've rejected Joseph Smith as Jewish. And so, that's also another thing, but I've done these videos, I've done the pictures. LDS rejects Joseph Smith. And so the bus, here I am. The baby. Seed egg baby, here I am. Born and raised in the Great and Abominable Church to lead Mormons out of it so we can go to Zion and I don't want bugs and yet I'm very deeply concerned about having rushed and again you also need to also know of the two other exoduses Lehi leaves before 9th Ave and then there's the destruction on 9th Ave. And there's a exodus of survivors who don't get taken hostage into Babylon. And it's the same thing with Rome. As, uh, there is no indication of, uh, of uh, an exodus prior to Rome. You can write it in as your own scripture, I guess, because Solomon Spalding also wrote about uh, the Roman period time that we do have record of that never got published. Manuscript found! And then everybody doesn't understand any of what he was doing, but nonetheless. His original one was the Babylonian one, uh, mixed with the Tower of Babel because he had both Jaredites and Lehites that left. So, he's an interesting guy. I would have liked to have seen his original work, but it had to be destroyed after the publication of the Book of Mormon so that nobody made the connection. That's too bad. But anyway. And, uh, and so... We see this in the Book of Mormon. Lehi leaves in advance. That would be the Feast of Tabernacles. This is Moses leaving. And, and yet, there's also the destruction part. But the Exodus story sets it up so he has time to organize people. So Lehi... They leave. Mormons reject him, want to murder him. He leaves. Feast of Tabernacles. And the church has been trying to do this to me. They tried to do it in 2020, and then they got me in 2022. 
and then put my foot upon the mountain, divide it in two. The Mormons who survived came through on dry ground. What are these wounds in your hands and your feet, Travis? These are the wounds with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Who are your friends? You don't have any friends. <laughs> and and so then the Mulekites are the ones who leave in the Book of Mormon story version with the destruction of Jerusalem. And then they found Zarahemla. They don't have the records of the history of the people. They change their language. They lose the concept of the Jewish Christ. And they're now speaking Jesus, Spirit, Guide, God, the Great Spirit of the Christians. Yeah, go through your whole Book of Mormon now. And whenever the Lamanites or the Zoramites or others talk about the Great Spirit, Lemhi, is that the Great Spirit? Are you the Great Spirit? <clears throat> no, not the Great Spirit. <laughs> Christian, Jesus, that's what they're talking about. Hilarious, once you understand that. So yes, the Zoramites, they build a Jewish synagogue, and yet they're worshiping Christian Jesus, the Great Spirit. right there for you to see, but you don't see it because you think you're supposed to be Christian. And, uh, and so when Mosiah, pre-Benjamin Mosiah, they call it an error of, and then, oh, to God, guys. Yeah, it's on the original document. It proves the Book of Mormon is literal history true. No, it doesn't. Sidney Rigdon. He warns you if there are any faults, they're the faults of a man. <sighs> but anyway. And, and so, yeah, these are the two exoduses. If there is no pre-exodus for this week, next week, Thursday, I'm going to be banging my head going, oh, God. Because then we're coming to the election, the bloodbath. Or we're already seeing the escalation, the provocation to civil war, whether we choose communism or fascism. It's not a vote to choose. We're, both of them are in violation of the Constitution. We are not supposed to choose another government. But that's what we've been doing ever since Thomas Jefferson created the first party group. And interesting, his party group included both Democrat and Republican in it. And here we are today, Democrats and Republicans, even though they aren't Democrats and Republicans anymore, it's communism and fascism. And then uh, Steve Bannon went and renamed them into populist and globalist with his European conquering tour after attacking America, and cooing that one with Cambridge Analytica and Facebook data sold to Russia. He did the same thing with Brexit. That was Bannon, member of the secret band of Gadianton to destroy America, and there's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Oak said, it's us, we're in charge of it. And so, um, yeah, that's the one I've been fearing, is that Mormons' wickedness, failing their judgment today, are now going to be unworthy to go to Zion, and so thus destruction with the election. And they've got backups in case the election day fails to cause the Civil War bloodbath, as uh, they are plotting to assassinate Harris so that she can't declare the victory of herself on January 6th. 
and they're already uh, threatening polling stations and the electoral college to decertify the election and, and to throw out ballots. Virginia, I think, was the state today I saw in the news that are already canceling out a whole bunch of votes illegally. And so already we're seeing witness election tampering. This is a fraudulent election. And then Trump can use that to, to victim blame and, and when he loses, because he's purposely tanking it, to try to get people angry and, and say that he needs to win as he's already still in denial that he lost because of Oaks. Oaks is the mastermind behind all of this. Nelson's just a puppet. <laughs> but nonetheless. So, there you go. Yom Kippur today. Feast of Tabernacles. Suck it on Thursday. And then the uh, Hanukkah restoring of the temple in December. And so, yeah, that's after the election, obviously. Because of the leap year this year, Hanukkah gets bumped up. Everything got bumped up. Because normally this would be in September rather than October. And so, yeah, it's, it's wild that it's a leap year. And Joseph Smith knew it of the dates that he did certain events on as symbolism and that's the fulfillment they all knew the dates they all knew the day and the hours but because of christianity days and the hours have been covered up and hidden from view with jesus goggles so hope that's it now i'm gonna figure out what kind of picture to use i don't want to really make in several pictures so I'll probably just do the prayer circle with Bill Maher <laughs>